you look around this area and what you see is agricultural fields. We're in the heart of the Midwestern Corn Belt. There's a silo in every town and it means that agriculture is really present in this environment. We began our work because we know that water quality in these agricultural streams and ditches is poor. Nutrients and sediments get washed from fields into waterways and then they move downstream. Close to home, that runoff threatens the freshwater mussels that are now endangered in the Tippecanoe River and they're hanging on by a thread. But way downstream in the Gulf of Mexico, a dead zone forms every summer caused by that same runoff from here in the headwaters. We needed to find conservation practices that worked here that can improve water quality leaving farm fields. We had to think about how agriculture and fresh water meet, where they meet and how they can partner instead of working against each other. Just going and knocking on someone's door is not the right, uh, right approach and we really needed sort of someone to help broker that relationship. We're working with the farmers in this area to bring them on board because we recognize them as a really valuable partner in this whole process. You know, we're not the soil and water district, we're not the county surveyor, right. we're not the natural resource conservation service, we are non-traditional partners. I was excited to get on board, if nothing more than to learn. The collaborations have really afforded us uh, a lot of knowledge that we wouldn't other, otherwise had uh, access to. In thinking about the partnership that we've developed with the farmers, the Conservation District, the Nature Conservancy, and Notre Dame, the one thing that I would say is that we're all equal partners at the table. It was the farmers that said, look, if you did the economic analysis for us and showed us whether this practice made dollars and cents in the real world, it would be so much easier to say yes when someone asks us to build a two-stage ditch or plant cover crops. We had no idea that no one had done that. And so here was this new direction our research was going and it was simply because um, someone told us, we don't have the answers to this. And I feel with Jen's testing of the water, we kind of have a, an idea of what's going on out there. And then obviously when she implemented the cover crops into their protocol, uh, it was very evident that we weren't doing the correct thing with just no-till and the manures, that we needed that cover crop as a, as a vehicle or as a, as a mechanism to hang on to those nutrients. I teach my students to be good stewards of that relationship that we're taking forward. We're on their land, we're taking water samples from the draining from their fields, and the point is we are, we are the partner, not the enemy. I feel that, that everything that Notre Dame has accomplished on our farm, there again leads us to the next level in, in conservation. We've been really pleased with how accepting the farmers are of this project and now they're coming to us and saying, what do we do next? The last three years in the Chateau Ditch watershed have shown us some incredible results. We're at 60% plus coverage of cover crop planting at the watershed scale, which has never been done before, whereas it's about 13% average in the state. And we're seeing 30, 40, 50% declines in nutrient loss from these fields. The next step of the research is to take what we've done here and expand it to someplace new. I think we're unlocking some of the, the mystery around how uh, we can solve this nutrient runoff problem, um, but proving it by showing we can do it somewhere else is going to be a, a big step forward. If it can somehow be good science, but at the same time serve society, then we're, we're really making a difference in a different way.